Well, it was another difficult day of testimony in the critical hearing for the admitted Oxford shooter. Ethan Crumbly back in court today as a judge heard more evidence against him. And this was the third day of our testimony to help determine the shooter's sentence for killing four students and wounding seven other people. Seven investigator Ross Jones joins us from the newsroom now with what happened today, Ross? Linda Bryan, psychologist Colin King sat in the witness box for the better part of the day. He is a key witness for the Oxford school shooter as he tries to avoid spending the rest of his life in prison. The part that sort of stood out for me was when he told his, his parents that he was hearing voices and he needed to see a therapist. I don't know what 15-year-old raises his hand and says, my brain hurts, I need to see a therapist. And it never happened. The defense today playing surveillance video from 2020 at an Oxford diner where Ethan Crumbly once worked. It showed the teen inexplicably falling and hitting his head on the floor. The defense suggesting the teen sustained a head injury that may have caused the behavior that followed. When Ethan fell in the diner and hit his head and the owner said, I need to call 911 and didn't, I consider that physical abuse. After the shooting, they played body cam video from the Oakland County Jail showing the Oxford gunman after the shooting yelling and crying. Someone who's saying, God, why didn't you stop it? And that's exactly how psychosis works. You engage in an action and somehow you don't understand the outcome of the consequences. He's having a panic attack and a break with reality. To secure a sentence less than life in prison, the defense needs to show that the gunman can be rehabilitated. Do you believe that there is the possibility of rehabilitation? I do. Ethan's brain is still maturing, um, and his brain probably will not reach full maturity for another 10 years. But prosecutors pushed back, attacking the doctor not just for what he put in his 70-page report about the gunman, but what he left out. Doctor, are you aware of when and how the defendant shot Justin Schilling? I am not aware, sir. Do you know how we asked Justin to get down on the ground and then he executed him? Are you aware of that? I take your word for it, sir. Does that matter to you? It does matter. <laughs> Dr. Colin King ultimately said that while the Oxford shooter is severely mentally ill, he did not deem him criminally insane. Today's testimony wrapped up just before 4 p.m., but it is not over. At least one prosecution rebuttal witness needs to still take the stand. And due to scheduling conflicts in the court, that won't happen until August 18th. That means victims' families will have to wait weeks more before this chilling testimony finally comes to an end. We're in the newsroom tonight. I'm Ross Jones, 7 Action News. Another tough day for the families. Ross, thank you. Families of students Tate Mir, Hannah St. Juliana, Madison Baldwin, and Justin Schilling, who were all killed, were seated in court for that important testimony. And 7 Action News reporter Simon Shaquette was also in court today and is live for us in Pontiac with reaction. Simon. Brian, Glenda, another very tough day for families in court as they had to listen to more than seven hours of that testimony from the psychology expert you just heard talking about the shooter's mental health, specifically before, during, and after the tragic shooting he admitted to planning and carrying out. On this third day of testimony, Dr. King testifying he does not support life without parole based on the shooter suffering that head injury and other factors saying he is mentally ill. Parents were visibly upset in court as they listened to that testimony that focused on a, also a shortage of social workers at Oxford High and claimed the defendant had anxiety, depression, and psychosis. Parents also watched several videos of the shooter that you saw there in jail. Nonetheless, prosecutors arguing a uh, rough home life did not excuse what happened and the defendant had every chance to call off his plan when he was called down to the school office. Take a listen to what a parent just told us. My children attend the school. My children were friends with him. They were in classes with him. He never, ever showed any 
any signs of different from his behavior from years past. Based on what you heard from both sides in questioning, in your opinion, is the defendant mentally ill? Um, I believe the defendant is mentally ill, but I also feel that his mental illness does not um, supersede his responsibility for what he did. We know the next person to take the stand, a psychiatrist on behalf of the prosecution, has already filed a report indicating she does not believe the defendant is mentally ill. Coming up at 6, where this case goes from here, live in Pontiac, Simon Shea, Cat 7 Action News. All right, Simon, we'll see you at 6. Thank you. Yeah, and we have all the details on what happened in the past three days of testimony during the Oxford Shooters hearing. Just head to our website, WXYZ.com.